I think a, mod, um, a, a modern version of this, you made me think of something a little bit different, but similar, is kind of um, the kind of modern uh, working environment uh, and, and kind of um, business speak and, and, and work speak. And there's this, there's this good um, Monty Python sketch um, where there's, 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 there's all these gentlemen having a kind of a board meeting and um, they're talking about uh, this year has been really, really good um for um our business of putting things on other things <laughs> <laughs> and um and now we have a speech from george about um how much you know the 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 the, the numbers uh, the, the percentages that we've had um successfully putting things on other things on other things and then Brilliant. that goes around and then you finally you have a guy saying this is just all silly isn't it <laughs> 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 and that reminds me of every kind of um meeting i've ever been in <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah. well python were always very good at, yeah. at exploring um our perceptions of the world and mm. and how bizarre um how bizarre our our how bizarre that are our kind of the identities we create for ourselves mm. uh and the worlds that we live in for ourselves and you know the idea you know that, that as long as you have a shared narrative and everybody shares the narrative then it kind of makes sense even though from outside it looks absolutely ridiculous yeah. but from inside the logic makes perfect there was a great one where it was just a short piece where it was kind of the great was it the great marvello and angela and the great marvello was a hypnotist like a kind of a, like a, a cabaret hypnotist mm. um and he was being employed by local council to hypnotize people into believing that they were living in in luxury flats <laughs> <laughs> um, and, so, and they went to and uh, there's the scene where, the, where, where you know, these, these flats so well you know the council saying well you know the reason that we've, we've we've employed this guy is because you know he can hypnotically put up a block of flats in minutes um <laughs> uh and whereas you know it would normally take us months and months to build them and then they're going to interview somebody who's in these flats uh and this guy says so well how does it feel to to be living in the product of somebody else's imagination and the guy says oh i never really thought of it that way and as he says that the building starts to topple. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Let's go. I think therefore I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, mm. I think we're going to have to squeeze a little bit here, but that's fine. I'm going to go for Seven Samurai next. Oh, well, obviously. Sooner or later, it would so, come up. One of my favourite films of all time. I watched it again. And let's watch it. Let's watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone can listen while they play. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favourite films of all time. It kind of watching that film changed my life, actually. Oh wow! Yeah. Gosh. Mm. Um, but yeah, more of that another time. Mm. So it um, it's been remade, I think, about five different w uh, ways. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you some of them. So obviously, Magnificent Seven. Yeah, classic. Uh, and then we have, um, could you believe it, A Bug's Life? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A Bug's Life yeah, is Seven course. Samurai. Yeah. And I think there's um, The Three Amigos, three Chevy amigos. Chase. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's been done. Uh, bat, um, Battle Beyond the Stars. Battle Beyond the Stars, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so basically, if anyone who's never seen it, it's basically a um, story of a village of um, uh, peasant farmers who are <clears throat> being continually attacked by bandits and they're taking everything from them. Um, so they, they talk to the village elder and the, uh, the village elder comes up with this idea of going to search for uh, a, a, a couple of samurai who can help defend them. Because at this time in, in Japan, so kind of medieval Japan, well, between a kind of uh, a period of um, eras where the samurai were uh, no longer employed they're called a uh, 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 Ronin, so they don't have a master. Um, so the whole, you know, the whole purpose of the samurai is to uh, work for their master. So they're like, you know, they're like knights, the chival chivalrous knights. Um, so they're kind of wandering around the place. Um, obviously, their identity is gone, but they still have the outward appearance of a samurai. Um, so they they are um, employed employed by this. Um, uh, um, peasant um, village to look after the, the, the village and, um, and defeat the, the, the bandits. Um, one of the reasons I love it so much is it is a brilliant kind of um, exploration of class and duty. So you have, you know, we have the bandits, which is kind of living outside of everything. 
and they're the you know they're, they're the kind of lack of morality they you know they destroy um, everything just take and take and you have the peasants who are like you know in in japanese society are the kind of fundamental um uh fundamental uh class that keeps everything going you know in japan um things were kind of measured by how much rice you could make and uh, um as and and they 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 exist there and then obviously the you have the um uh, the samurai class uh, kind of uh, kind of the upper class and um they are kind of revered and um they have an enormous enormous sense of duty they die for their for their um their master mm. and but without a master they have no identity so they kind of take up this cause in in you know in in the absence of that so they've got this you know kind of duty and there's they've all got different ideas these seven samurai have all got kind of different identities you have like a, a, a kind of the the leader of the samurai who's um who is uh, doesn't want doesn't really want any any you know doesn't want money doesn't he just does things as a sense of duty and you have like a a master swordsman and you have like a you know a comedy character and you have and so on and so on and what makes it extra special is because you have this one samurai who's not really a samurai He's actually from the the peasant class, but he's mm. kind of tricked his way in to become a, a, a samurai. And, um, and the other samurai reluctantly they make fun of him um, um, because he hasn't got the kind of social graces, and because um, he comes from the the, the the peasant stock. But he, they allow him reluctantly to join them. And then you have this kind of he's a kind of conduit between the the, the farmers and the samurai. So after this journey, the samurai get to the village and um, they're expecting this warm welcome. And, but there's kind of words got about about what the samurai might do to, um, to the to villagers. And they might, you know, um, take their daughters and this kind of thing. Mm. And they, they're kind of they're panicky. So there's the, the, the place is, is um, you know, deserted. They're all hiding in their huts. And, and the samurai kind of upset about this. Well, you know, we've come here to to to, to help you, and you, this is you know this is the thanks. This is the, the, what we have. And um, before you know it, you hear that the, the the village alarm being hit, which is like a bit of wood. Don't 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 don't. Don. And then so that's kind of a warning of the um, peasants coming, and all the all the um, the farmers are running out of their houses and they're, they're saying please help us the uh, um, the samurai mm. after before hiding from them please help us please help us and you find out it's the it's the kind of the fake samurai who's being hitting this alarm mm. because he knows he knows that who they are he know he knows yeah. everything about them he knows that yeah um uh, what they will do and that's one of, one of the um a number of things that show us the kind of the comparison between these classes mm. and um so the the person who plays like a fake samurai is um um toshiro mifune is like mm -hmm. a great you know great japanese actor and um so mifune's character you can tell he also he despises and loves the the, the farmers and the samurai he looks up to the samurai, but he hates them as well because of the way they kind of treat the, the peasants. And he despises the peasants because he knows what they're like. Mm. And the actual, the, actual, the, the part that the, um, in the film that always gets me every time is the best part of the film is um, the, the, the samurai and the peasants are getting along and um, the, the, the samurai are training the peasants. And um, in the preparation, we notice that one of the peasants has a spear and um, Mifune says, where did you get that spear? And, 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 and the, the, um, the, the peasants are a bit sheepish and we find out that they've got lots of samurai armor and weapons. Mm. And the reason they have it is because um, when the samurai are kind of fighting outside um, uh, their wars, some of the uh, dying samurai have been kind of ambushed by peasants mm. and they finish them off and take their stuff basically yeah. Yeah. um so 
<clears throat> Mifune and, and these um, farmers, they, they kind of march into the hut with all the samurai there and say, look, we've got all this stuff we can use. There's, uh, there's arrows, there's spears, there's armour. Let's go. This is great. And then obviously the, the samurai are disgusted. And, and they know what's happened to these you know, the samurai because you know, that's part of their class. These, the, the, these samurai have been kind of butchered and finished mm. off. And the, and, the, and the samurai say, I, I, one samurai says, I now want to kill everybody in this village. And you know, this is, yeah. this is, these people are, are, are you know, nothing. It's interesting, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, it, remind, just, I mean, it mm. reminds me a lot of, of a number of, of, of motifs that, that crop up, both philosophically and, and, and politically. I mean, you've got, uh, I mean, you've got kind of that platonic idea that you have got very discreet classes. You've mm. got, you know, you know, the gold souls, if you like, these people who are born to rule, are born to be, to be the elite. It's not their fault. That's just the way it is. Mm. Uh, and if you try and be anything other than that, then you're being untrue to your, 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 you know, your class, your mm. class, if you like. Mm. Uh, and then you've got the kind of the bronze souls who are born to be uh, the plebeian classes, the ones who just have to kind of get on with the work. There's no particular shame in that. Um, but you oughtn't to pretend to anything else. There's no kind of way that you should be improving yourself in any way. And you've got the kind of you've got mm. the, 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 the kind of the false samurai mm. who is trying to very much trying to elevate himself out. He's still very much part of his own village, mm. uh, but as you say, he, he desperately wants to kind of elevate himself out somehow, kind of distance himself from that. Mm. So Plato would say you can't do that. Mm. Uh, and then you've got kind of people like you know you've got people like Nietzsche. Uh, I'm kind of you know talking about you know, you've got your herd out there um, and the herd will just will just kind of they will just follow an agenda mm. um, and it might be a kind of enlightenment agenda it might be a kind of religious and a religious agenda um, but they're the ones who will just will just do what is expedient mm. you know um, whereas the kind of the, 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 the true elite the people who are prepared to kind of exercise this kind of will to power are the people who are the ones who set their own agenda, who set mm. their own narrative, or have their own values and cling to those um, rather than being kind of tossed about by kind of the, all the kind of external narratives. So you've got that kind of tradition running through. And I watched um, the other day, they, they televised um, a performance of Coriolanus, mm -hmm. Shakespeare's, uh, Shakespeare's play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tom Hiddleston was actually pretty decent. Mm -hmm. and, and it's exactly the same thing. In, in that you have you have Coriolanus who's who's uh, you know uh, 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 had kind of victories in battle and he's come back covered in blood and scars and stuff. He says, oh, you know, I have beaten back the enemies of Rome, uh, and they say, oh yeah, yeah, no, you should be a consul now. We should kind of elevate you to to a kind of a political position. Mm. Uh, and he needs to get the kind of the, the tribunes on side. He needs to get the kind of the will of the people, the popular vote, because it's a republic. Mm. Um, and he says, like, you know, God's sake, he's, you know, he, he, I mean, he's arrogant, to mm. be fair. He is arrogant. Um, but he's got this kind of, this, this point, well, you know, we can't let, we can't let the kind of the rank and file, you know, the bronze souls, the plebs, mm. determine how things are run. They've got no clue. You know, they'll just make a complete pig's breakfast of it. Why should we, you know, I'm happy to kind of lead them. I'm happy to fight for them. You know, I'm happy to be, does somebody use the analogy of being the stomach? And say, you know, mm. you know, you know, we are the we are the stomach. You know, we take in all the the nutrients, all the supplies, and then we distribute it. We spread it out to all the other parts, which do all the work. Um, but you know, that's how it should be. And and eventually, the the, the, the people are rallied against him. You know, people kind of you know, the, the, he's he's set up in a way by the tribunes mm. to look like a tyrant, mm. um, and they chase him out chase him out of Rome. So, oh, you know, having your tyrannical thing. You know, don't want to hear the will of the people. Mm. Uh, they chase him out. Uh, and then he takes, he comes back at the head of a, of a foreign army mm -hmm. to just, you know, just say, okay, you know, well, I'm going to just wipe you one out. You know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to care anymore. You need, you betrayed me, you betrayed, you know, you betrayed the, the natural order of things. And now, you know, I'm coming for you and uh, don't, don't expect any, uh, any mercy. And it was only ultimately because his family, his wife and mother come and plead with him that he eventually, you know, right at the last minute decides not to and dies for it. Mm. Um, and I think it's, it's a really salutary point at the moment because we're, we're trapped politically at the moment in this kind of, well, on the one side, we quite value democracy, mm. the will of the people. You know, that's you know, that's what's going on when we're looking at, when we're talking about the state, we're talking about the people mm. um, and they should have a say. And yet political popularism has, you know, because it's generally uneducated and ill-informed, mm. is allowing all kinds of ridiculousness to take place without opposition 
Mm. Um, so what do you do? Do you go with a kind of a, the elitist view? Do you say, yes, you know, the samurai, you know, the, the gold souls, the people with the world of power, the, these are the people that should govern in that kind of, in that kind of, you know, um, 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 you know, that kind of um, Thomas Hobbes sort of Leviathan mm. way that we need, we need people who know what's going on to rule. Mm. Um, in which case, where's the input from the popular from from the popular from the popular front where where do ordinary people get a say mm. um and you see I, I you know you and you kind of see aspects of that i think in 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 the seven samurai because you have these kind of elite samurai mm. um who know how to fight and and have a particular kind of standard and so on and then you have the kind of the people who are just very pragmatic it's mm. kind of well, what, whatever gets me through the day well that's the um, thing with that the rest of that scene um, so he runs in with the armor, the, and the, the samurai are disgusted with this, you know, this morality. They see the, the, the bad morality of the of the um, of the peasants. But then, you know, the Mifune character, who's you know really a, a peasant, he grabs a, a lots of arrows and throws them against the wall, and he says, "Yes, what do you think farmers are? Do you think they're saints? Yeah, they're not yeah. saints. Yeah, you know, they've got." Yeah, they've got hidden rice. They, you know, they've got um, um, all these other things that, that they're not going to. They're going to say they're poor. They're going to say they, they've got nothing, but they're not. They've got lots of things. Mm. Um, and 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 then he says, "But who made them like this? Who makes mm. them? You know, uh, these kind of miserable liars." And he and he points the finger at the samurai because he says, "You know, you um, um, just." Um, put your force your will on them and kill them if they resist yeah and that's you know, that's that class pushing down mm. so of course you know that's what i'm always reminded of is um when people will, um you have people uh, kind of a higher class who who begrudge people uh, things like you know if they're so poor why are they smoking you know if they're so <laughs> poor they phones, why have they yeah. got mobile phones and it's like, do you think that, you know, these people have got to be saints then to you? They've got to be so yeah. like a perfect, the perfect yeah. type of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Incidentally, I just wanted to quickly say something come up, um, talk about Coriolanus. Mm. There's a film called Happy New Year, Colin Burstead. I think you can get it on iPlayer, actually. Mm. And it's um, apparently a loose kind of... Um, it's kind of a kitchen sink drama based on Coriolanus and the, or, the original it's by um, Ben Wheatley uh, I've seen it it's great um, the original title was Colin Uanus <laughs> brilliant <laughs> um, yeah it's oh, worth watching I'd watch excellent. it yeah. Um, yeah some great there's some great actors actors in that one super okay yeah so Sam, uh, there's so much more you could talk about yeah. with um, Severance Samurai one of my favorite i mean i know we've talked about this one of my favorite pieces one of my favorite most moving you know what i'm gonna say mm. moments in that um in that in that film and again it kind of it typifies the kind of the idea of kind of paradigm shifts and changes in values and worldviews and so on you have as you say the master swordsman mm. who is you know unbeatable with the sword and he's and he's he's, he's probably the most traditional mm. of all the, the the samurai in the film um, and you see everybody's kind of in awe mm. of him. He's very taciturn, you know, and he's doing the, he does what he's kind of exercises with his sword and the kind of the sword kind of goes back into its scab and so on. Um, and it turns out that he gets shot mm. from a mm. distance at the end yeah. um, as he's fighting. And it's kind of, yeah, you know, here we have an entire, here we have, you know, uh, things have moved on, things, have, you know, things have changed. And there's, there's always, if you don't adapt to, changing circumstances in that mm. kind of very phenomenological way kind of look if you just take where you think you are your kind of skill set your status your sense of your place in the world and expect the world to fit around that mm. eventually you'll get left behind mm. um the seeker of, of, of the human condition is its ability to adapt and its ability to evolve yeah um and a lot of these kind of a lot of the kind of elite characters we see in in literature and in film mm. are typified by their inability to be flexible and their inability to evolve and mm. change mm. um and so you know this guy for all his skill um gets killed by somebody who's just pointed a gun at him from yeah. distance. he doesn't even see who did it mm. uh, tragic it's very yeah, sad yeah. Very sad. Moment. 
it's a, it's a film that, yeah, like I say, it changes you if you've never seen this film. Mm. Mm. It's very, very great, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's, a, and it's a big epic as well. Yeah, yeah.